welcome you back to ESPN's coverage of the 1997 World Racquetball Finals here in Hamburg, Germany, where the rookie American sensation Sudzi Manchek has just stolen the serve from the Russian bank Khrushchev and is now one point away from winning the entire championship. Let's get back to the game. Sudzi with the serve, goes into the motion. He's using his patented Sudzi swivel serve. The serve is good, they goes for it. No, Sudzi has done it, Sudzi has done it. champion today and it is Sudsi Manchek. Incredible. When the volumes of sports history are finally written, there will be a space reserved in the S volume for Sudsi Manchek. This masterful performance one November afternoon 10 years ago is what secured Sudsi his fame. What happened next is what made him legendary. But I do have to make one announcement. I'm from this point forward playing no more pro sports. It is a retirement. That includes racquetball. <laughs> no question. No question. We sought to catch up with the ex-champion today at his home in the Northeast. Sudsy graciously gave us this interview so that we could try and peer into the mind of a man who had it all and walked away. All right, so if you follow me, this is uh, my kitchenette slash workout facility. You know, space is a little limited, but it works out because most of the things here double. Like this thing, it's a bread maker, also measures my heart rate. But it's uh, surprisingly roomy, it's pretty easy to work with. Pretty good, not too bad. Today, Sudsy still keeps his body in prime game condition, thanks to his workout facilities and rigorous diet. But can charity matches alone be enough to quell the competitive thirst of a man who Sports Illustrated once labeled extreme sportsman of the extreme century? Am I a competitor? Well, Webster's defines competitor as one who competes against another, either in sports or business. I think I really define myself that way, you know? That's how I kind of keep the Sudsy Manchek empire rolling. Ballin' and business. Ballin' indeed. Sudsy made financial headlines in 1998 when he signed a record $3 million endorsement deal with Nike. At the time, the largest ever by an inactive player. Yeah, I'd say the Nike deal was probably the best, you know? It's what brought the Manchek shoe line to the people. Then I did a bunch of McDonald's commercials. But I think the most lucrative is when that German video game company approached me to make a bunch of Sudsy Manchik related games. You know, like the 1992 one, uh, Sudsy Manchik's Extreme Street Racquetball? That was awesome. And also the other one, Ink and Treasure Hunting with Sudsy Manchik. Hey, this is Sudsy. Let's go hunt some treasure. Also fun. Though he lost much of the endorsement money in the dot com bust that followed, Sudsy still enjoys a comfortable lifestyle today. But one question still lingers in the minds of his fans. A lot of people come up to me and they say, they take me by my shoulder and they say, Sudsy, why did you do it? When people think racquetball, they automatically think Sudsy. You can't buy that kind of fame. That's enough for me. I've made my mark. I can walk away, you know? Sometimes I'll pop up in people's heads. Usually in a fantasy way for women. Mostly. You know, sometimes really dress up. That was a good shot. Not. Good composition. I hope she sends me doubles, or at least shows it to her hot friends or something. Biff Lingo, ESPN.